Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'll be reviewing this phone right here. This is a Samsung Galaxy S Plus. This phone was released back in July of 2011 and it used to cost around $380. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon S2 and an Adreno 205 GPU. It comes with 512MB of RAM and 8GB of storage. It also has a 5 megapixel camera and a 4 inch 480 x 800 Super AMOLED display. All of that is powered by a 1650 million power battery. Let's find out what this 12 year old flagship can still do in 2023. Alright, first off, it was time to give this phone a clean up since when I got it, it was quite dirty, but after a good wipe down, it looked pretty good again. Now let's set up the phone. Setting up this phone was a pretty straightforward process, but I sadly could not log into any Google accounts on this phone. After the setup was complete, I was launched into Android 2.3.5. This Android install is a pretty standard Samsung install, with some XR region exclusive pre-installed apps and some pretty standard Samsung bloatware apps. Overall, the first impression is still quite good, this phone feels pretty snappy. Then it was time to install some apps. Since the Play Store has long since stopped working on this phone, I had to resort to installing APKs. There were some apps that I could not install like Discord and TikTok, but for the most part I could at least find compatible APKs for most of the apps, but I don't have high hopes for most of them actually working though. Now it's time to put in a SIM card, SD card and get to testing. First off, launching WhatsApp. WhatsApp is sadly not supported anymore since the installed version of Android is too old. Snapchat would not sign me in under any circumstances, telling me that there was a problem connecting to the server. Testing out the speaker on this phone, it's quite good and still goes pretty loud. This is how the speaker sounds. For ports, this phone has a 3.5mm jack for audio on the top and next to it is a micro USB port for data and charging. Time to test out the microphone. The microphone in this phone is pretty bad. It's good enough for calling, but not much more than that. This is how the microphone sounds. Right, this is the microphone test of the Samsung Galaxy S Plus. The microphone recording software itself looks pretty good and it's easy to use. So I'm curious as to how the microphone sounds. Let's move on to testing out the camera. This phone has a 5 megapixel camera on the back which can shoot video up to 720p 30fps. The front camera has a resolution of only 0.3 megapixel and this camera can only shoot pictures. You can't record video with the front facing camera. Like always, I'll be comparing this phone with my main phone, a Samsung Galaxy S21. Starting off with this close-up image, the Galaxy S Plus did very well. It captured quite a lot of detail, something that I did not expect. This picture with a bright background is reasonable. Even though the colors are a bit off and the picture is blurry overall, it's still pretty impressive coming out of this phone. The next picture of some outside scenery is basically the same. Even though the quality is nothing impressive, it's surprisingly good for a 12 year old phone. The selfie camera is a different story though. Like you can see the image quality is very poor, the image is too dark and it's also pretty blurry. Testing out some video recording, this phone continues to impress me with the back camera. This video quality is almost on par with the Alcatel One Touch Go Play that I reviewed a couple of videos ago while well, that phone came out over 4 years after this one. Moving outside, this picture of some flowers shows just how good this camera was for its time. The picture is bright enough, it's not blurry, just a very good result. 
On this next photo the quality is a bit worse, as like you can see the colors are off and the picture overall is just a bit too dim. Testing out some outside video recording, it feels like the quality of the video that the S Plus took outside is worse than the video it took inside, as a lot of the parts of the video are just way too bright. Testing out the front facing camera, the resolution itself did not improve, but as there was more than enough light, this image didn't come out as dim as the picture I took inside. Overall, the back camera is pretty decent, but the front facing camera is pretty bad. I then tried listening to some music on this phone. It connected to my AirPods Pro without any issues, and after transferring some music files to this phone, since music streaming services do not work in this phone, listening to music was a pretty good experience. Trying to run some benchmarks, Passmark would unfortunately crash every time I tried opening the app. The same goes for Asphalt 8, this game would also sadly not run. And the last game I could download, 8Ball Pool, would also not start, giving me an error about the connection being lost, probably due to an out of date app. And with that, it's time to give my final opinion on this phone. What's my final verdict? It's pretty impressive how good this phone still looks and performs today. Although software support has long since ended, the screen looks very good and the camera performance is quite impressive for such an old phone. Sadly, if you actually want to use the Galaxy S Plus, I would not recommend it, as it's just far too old to be actually usable. I could not find any apps that worked, the Play Store does not work anymore, and even a lot of modern websites refuse to load in the web browser. Overall, even though it's sad to see such an iconic phone completely obsolete, by installing a custom ROM you could get it back some usability, but I don't think it's worth the performance impact, so I would not recommend this phone as it's practically unusable in 2023. And with that, this video comes to an end. Thanks so much for watching, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!